So now that the speaker is tested, it's time to design and build a crossover for this puppy. As you can see, it's available to be tested anytime I want. Anyway, here's uh, what I did to uh, slap a crossover together uh, after much learning and uh, reading online. The first place I went to was DIY uh, Audio and Video. And uh, there's a lot of good resources on here as far as designing and building a crossover. Uh, they've got a designer on this site, a uh, two-way crossover designer. So you select your speaker ohms. Uh, I don't remember what they are. Well, let's just say 4.8 and a crossover frequency of 1500. And then you get to choose which crossover you want out of the list. And uh, then you click Calculate. And it gives you your values of uh, your capacitors and also your inductors that you need to put your crossover together. So once I got this far, I uh, launched a program called XSIM. Let's get this thing set up here. Min frequency, we want to go down as far as we can to 10, and I think the maximum is already at uh, 20 hertz. But uh, this is a curve that I came up with, and this is the uh, crossover design I came up with. I added two components at the beginning. So this is one, there's a capacitor and all of this inductor as well. And this is what the curve looks like without. I don't think that this capacitor is gonna be practical just because it's a uh, it's way too big and they don't make uh, good audio quality capacitors in that size. But I'm curious to kind of see what it does. It tames down this uh, impedance curve by like a lot if I throw these two things back on there. And it drops the impedance way lower it does decrease the uh, level of where I can hear the sound, but uh, it brings up uh, right around, looks like, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 35 uh, hertz for frequency. It brings that up quite a bit than if I have it missing from there, and it smooths this out a uh, great deal. I uh, did go ahead and buy the components for uh, trying that just because I'm curious to kind of see what it does and to see if it's a good decision or not to be playing around with uh, just whatever your standard capacitor. So I will try that out. Anyway, uh, the rest of the uh, design you can see here. The speaker components, if I click on tune and go to the uh, tweeter, I did get FRD and ZMA files uh, imported so that I can actually view the curve. So if I put the driver curves on there, so we got the tweeter and we got the base and we can kind of see what the curves look like together. And it has a nice clean crossover point and it should have a fairly flat response uh, using that. What I really like about the XSIM program is a guy like me that's totally new and has no idea what's going on here. You can just simply take and uh, click on any component you want, hit the T for tune and adjust this up and down and you can see on the graph on the right hand side exactly what changing that component value does to your whole speaker uh, curve or your linear frequency response curve. Extremely beneficial for uh, getting me going. If you're not sure how to get your own uh, FRD and a ZMA files, this took me a little while to figure out. I will uh, also leave a link to that video up in one of the top corners here and uh, show you how I figured out how to get those curve files. After that, kind of what I did is I just took the, uh, the crossover components directly off of that website, plugged them in, that was my starting point, and then I just kind of tuned them based on the uh, speaker response curves that you see to kind of get these things as flat as I possibly could. Great little program, absolutely love it. Uh, this might be a problem here, this is some of the uh, Something else I was thinking about, running the ohms down to, it's below two at this one point. I don't know if that's wise. That could be a really bad thing. I'll take it easy. I really don't want to blow up my expensive Rotel or my Marantz uh, receiver or amp. That would really suck. So, whatever. I'm going to learn the hard way and you guys get to check it out. So, that's, uh, that's what I've come up with for the uh, crossover. And uh, I put it together on a breadboard just using uh, cheap components. I picked up a bunch of kits from Amazon. You got your breadboard kits. You got capacitors. We got inductors. And these things are just, they're absolutely tiny. So keep this in mind. Uh, and a bunch of resistors as well. Just of different varying values. And it's just literally to see before I went and spent the money on the uh, audio quality capacitors, inductors, and all that to see if <laughs> I was in the right ballpark. After I did put it together and uh, gave it a listen, 
I'm uh, quite pleased that uh, I feel like the, the the values are pretty good. If I sit down and listen to it, yes, the components are junk, but uh, the purpose of it was just to see if I've got the crossover kind of built right. And I feel like it's pretty close. So I'm going to take and uh, order those parts up. Then I'll put it together. And uh, then I should have a crossover and get a chance to actually listen to this thing for real. If you've been with the channel for any length of time here, I've got a bunch of these videos I'm putting together. On the last one, I did a recording with the uh, Polk Audio speaker that you see in the back versus this guy that I built. And I got to say, take it with a grain of salt. It's just kind of for a comparison. Uh, after watching the video, the sound quality really doesn't come out very well on the recording. So it's very unfair to either speaker. So the best thing I can probably do is just kind of describe kind of how it works. I mean, I think I should record them anyway so you guys get a chance to hear the differences or you can flip between the different uh, recordings and get a chance to listen to them. So anyway, uh, here's the recording with the uh, crossover not connected or not going through the crossover and then the recording of it going through the crossover. That should at least give you a pretty good idea that the uh, the crossover is necessary uh, 100%. The uh, tweeter at first, I'm surprised they didn't blow it up. I had the volume too loud and it sounded really bad and really distorted. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty thankful I didn't blow that thing up because it's uh, not a cheap tweeter. If you do know anything about crossover building and uh, can give me some pointers, I would love to hear from you down below so I don't have to do all of this uh, from scratch uh, the hard way. The websites of uh, the authors that I mentioned here, I'll leave the links down in the description. I appreciate what you've put together. You've helped me a great deal on learning this whole setup process or learning this whole building process. So thanks to you guys. Appreciate it. The uh, components should be arriving in the next uh, week or so here. I'll put that together and uh, put a video of the actual crossover getting assembled and then uh, we'll get an audio test of just the cheap component crossover versus actually spending some money into a decent crossover coming up. That video will be, I think it's this side. I can never get this right. It's mirrored and it messes with my mojo constantly. Anyway, it'll show up on this side here when it's done. This side, whatever. It's gonna show up on one of the sides as soon as I got that video put together and you guys can check it out. Let me know what you think.